Hey there, if you are somebody who is starting to prepare for a recertification or an external assessment, in this episode of Ask Best Practice, I'm gonna be talking about how you guys can prepare your team, what you need to prepare. We get lots and lots of questions around, you know, we're getting ready to transition to a new standard or we're getting ready for recertification audit. So this is right down the barrel of external auditing and external certification for ISO standards. Uh, we're covering this topic because we have had a couple of questions in the last two weeks about this specific issue and how we can prepare for your ISO 9001 recertification. So there is a bunch of questions. I've got some points to talk about. I've got some information here that I'm gonna be going through. So if you are somebody who is coordinating your team, getting your team organized for an external assessment, doesn't necessarily just have to be for recertification, it can be getting ready for any assessment. I'm gonna be talking about the things to consider, both you know, the work that you need to do at your desk, if you like, in terms of uh, things to prepare, but I also wanna talk about your team and I wanna talk about your organization. So um, as always, it's good to jump on and see how you guys are going and see what's happening out in the big wide world. Uh, we've reset the studio a little bit today, uh, a subtly different direction. Yesterday, uh, what day is it today? It's Wednesday. Two days ago, we had our all company meeting, our monthly meeting, so studio was uh, set up. So slightly different background. You get to see some of our brands today over here above my shoulder. Uh, some of our different businesses. So uh, let me know where you are watching from. If you are watching the recording, then um, jump on, please jump on and, and uh, you know, if you're watching the recording after the live event, still comment, because I get to see all of the comments from everybody. So uh, this is um, something to consider. If you've got external auditors or if you've got external people coming into your organization, maybe it's a customer. Uh, so it's, you know, a customer could be coming into your organization to do a review. You could have some external auditors coming through to do a review. I wanted to get on today and talk about some of the things that you need to be aware of that might be happening in your organization. Yes, what is important to prepare and, uh, and what to get ready, but also some of the, 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 you know, the maybe the tangible issues that might be occurring, specifically how your team's feeling. So couple of discussions over the last two weeks prompted this particular video. Um, good morning, Stan. Um, Brawley this morning. Wow, you get around. Um, so um, good to have you on board. Um, hey guys on um, on YouTube. Excellent. We've got some people down in Tasmania. We've got some people in Perth. Fantastic. Good to see you guys this morning. I hope this is uh, going to be useful for you. Uh, it was, uh, it's, it's uh, related to some two conversations in two days with two clients that I had. Uh, just talking about, um, you know, the question was, how do we prepare for our, um, you know, what do we need to prepare? How do we get organized for our re upcoming recertification? Now, this could be for a quality ISO 9001 audit. It could be for safety. It could be for environment. It could be for cybersecurity. It could be for a customer assessment. It could be for a tender. It could be for suppliers. You know, any of these external reviews, I want you to be aware of a couple of things. So I'm going to go through some of my notes and I'm going to go through this uh, uh, brochure if you like. Uh, morning Ashley, morning Emma, morning Tanya, good to have you guys on board. Canada, excellent. Um, so uh, I'm assuming it's uh, it's late in the evening for you over there in Canada, so um, I appreciate your time and having you guys on this morning. So um, thanks everyone, everyone for joining us. Uh, good crowd there on YouTube this morning. Uh, another person from Canada. So we've got a couple of people over there in Canada. Good to have the Canadians on board, our Canadian brothers and sisters. Uh, good to have you guys on board this morning. So uh, this afternoon, this evening for you guys. So excellent. I've got a dashboard here beside me so I can see your comments. So um, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, really good opportunity to ask questions over there in those comments and I can get to those and I can see those with you guys. Okay, so Vanessa is going to do us a favor um, shortly. She's going to post a link to this document. Uh, here, which is a business improvement brochure that we uh, we issue to people that we're talking to about whether we're going to help best practice is going to help them. So uh, you can get a copy of this. That's got our best practice logos there on the bottom. You can see the different marks. That's the ISO 9000 and best practice ISO 9000 and um, one mark. More people from Canada. We've got a good crowd from Canada this morning. Um, so uh, Selena, good to have you. I hope I've said your name, pronounced your name correctly. Um, so we've got uh, Tanya, Eric, and Selena there from, uh, from Canada uh, this evening for you guys. Uh, so yeah, the quality logo, the safety logo, the environment logo, and the cybersecurity logo. So when best practice uh, certifies you or registers you, you can actually display those trust marks on your business cards, on your vehicles, on your website, 
Uh, so that's what that's all about. What we've put, uh, there we go, Vanessa has posted the link on YouTube. If you could also post that on uh, LinkedIn for me, Vanessa, that would be fantastic. Uh, so the link to this uh, particular thing is a flipping book there. You can click and open that in another tab and have a look at that um, if you like. Um, and so um, what we put together was like a what we look for. So I do get, we do get asked a lot of questions like you guys are going to come out and do an assessment. It's a brand new assessment or it's a recertification assessment. What are you gonna, guys going to look for? So we've put a list here. Uh, what, what we are trying to do here at Best Practice is encourage you to be really thinking about 2025 with your management system, not thinking about 1990. So we want, to be, we want you to be thinking about the modern management principles, practices, techniques, and how we can integrate that into your management system. So in terms of preparing for an upcoming assessment, the, the ultimate objective of a, of a recertification assessment is this. We are um, going to put our hand on our heart and we, we're going to say, we've seen that you've got a management system. We've seen that you're implementing that management system and we've seen that you're improving that management system. So part of the partnership when we're going to work together, we're going to be asking you to demonstrate to us, you know, you know we're going to work together to do this in partnership. So it's not a test. It's, can you show us how you, you know, can you show us your management system? Can you show us how you use it? Can you show us how you use it to control your risks? Uh, can you use it, can you show us how you use your management system to improve your customer experience? That's your quality system. Your quality system is there to improve your customer's experience, benchmark and improve your customer's experience. How do you use your management system? How does it help you as a business focus on your customers? If it's a safety environment or cybersecurity risk management system, how does it help you to protect and control cybersecurity? How does it protect you with workplace safety? How does it protect you, you know, and help you with sustainability? So we're coming in to say, can we see a management system? You know, can we observe that the organization is strategic, is organized, is systematic? Can we see that? Can we see that the intent of how you guys are running your organizations follows the intent of the international standards? And then can we see that you have a system in process, you know, systems and processes in place to improve that? So that's our objective. So in terms of preparing, the best way to prepare is to just run your business in a strategic way. And, and I think that, you know, I would like to quite quote my mum um, right now. And she says, you know, don't clean the house before the party, clean the house after the party, because you could have kind of clean it twice. And, you know, it's a, it's a tongue in cheek comment, but, you know, the, the kinds of parties that I remember having, you know, in my family home when we were growing up, it's like they were huge and there was a lot of work to do the next day, you know, cleaning up from the party. So, so when we come in and we're, you know, a best practice assessment is about a party. It's about spending some time together, talking about the future and having a great time and learning from each other and, you know, and in a really friendly environment so that we can help the organization be better at, you know, have better systems and processes in place to improve the customer experience, have better systems and processes in place to help with OHS or sustainability or cybersecurity. So, um, so, excellent. Or, oh, David's on board again. So, uh, buenas noches, uh, um, David. Good to have you on board this morning. So, Newcastle in in Australia. Good to have you guys all on board there. So, on YouTube and LinkedIn. So, let me know where you are watching from. Okay. So, what we've done is in this list, and you can click the link uh, in the comments there on YouTube. Um, that'll come up shortly, I think, there on the LinkedIn comments as well. So you can click the link to this. We've got an electronic version for you guys to have a look at. You know, we talk about defining your company's why. I talked about, you know, a 2020, what does your management system look like in 2025? You know, we, we really love Simon Sinek's comment, uh, content here. Um, we recently did some live streaming. Um, you know, we watched some live streaming with a conference he was running in the last couple of weeks. Uh, some of you guys, I can see in the feed, you were part of that. Um, and so uh, there you go, the link now, Luke has just pasted the link in the comments. Thank you, Luke, uh, on LinkedIn. So you can see this, uh, this document in the comments there. So, um, you know, start with why. So has your organization defined its why? You know, for 2025, those are the sorts of things you can start working towards. Have you got clear values? Have you got a clear mission? Have you got a worthy cause that you're progressing? The why of your organization, I think it's important. And, and so we wanna be bringing you know, you know, helping you look to the future and look to modern management techniques and philosophies uh, to help improve your organization. So we're gonna, we ask for that, we look for that. We look for quarterly strategic planning and management review workshops. 
we look for issues identification, risk register, SWOT analysis, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, we, we're looking for um, a one-page business strategy or you know, a, a, a super modern condensed business plan. We're looking for a dashboard of statistics so that your monitoring and measurement, measurement in your organization is helping you track your performance. Uh, we're looking for you know, a, a, maybe a defined customer journey and then we're looking for key accountabilities of individual people on your team and how they help the customer move through the organization, how they help manage safety, how they help manage sustainability or cyber security. So we're looking for clear accountabilities, job descriptions, position descriptions, and then we're looking for people management. So we're looking for you know, the one goal of, uh, Andrew Grove says in his book, High Output Management, highly recommended reading, Andrew Grove, High Output Management, uh, maybe one of you guys could um, grab a copy of that. The box beside my desk has got high output management in it, just in the corner. Um, high output management by Andrew Grove. He talks about as managers, we have one job to motivate and train our people. And that's part of the management system's core responsibility. It's to give people guidance and information on how to run the business, how to stop thing, you know, negative things from happening. So what Andrew Grove talks about is have clear accountabilities and then motivate and train people. Here we go. This is it, Andrew Grove's book, High Output Management. It's an excellent read. Uh, it's definitely not brand new. So it was published in, uh, let me just quickly let you know. Uh, it was published, initially published in 1983 and then revised in 95 and then 2015. Uh, so the original copyright is in uh, 1983. It was updated in 2015 by Ben Horowitz, with a forward by Ben Horowitz, who wrote The Hard Thing About Hard Things. So two great authors, Ben Horowitz and Andrew Grove. Andrew Grove was the CEO of, CEO of Intel um, and ran Intel. So, uh, and this is an excellent book. So if you haven't got high output management in your library, uh, I'd recommend getting a copy of it as soon as you can and maybe reading it through the festive season while you're having some time off, if you're gonna have time off. So a uh, highly recommended reading, uh, Andrew Grove. So what he talks about is as managers, we've got one responsibility to motivate and train. And so when we talk about clear accountabilities here, we're talking about you know understanding who's part of that process and with a dashboard of statistics, and then we can have people responsible, then we can motivate and train them to keep improving their performance. And that's the core responsibility of the management system. Uh, some stakeholder analysis, uh, organizational chart position descriptions, training records, uh, internal audits. I like to call them peer process reviews. If you can have people peer reviewing each other, that meets the intent of internal audits. Uh, understanding your legal and other requirements, contractual requirements, laws, regulations. You know, how do you identify those? How do you map those into your organization? How do you adjust your organization so it continues to comply with the relevant laws for where you are? And then uh, some operational controls. So planning, you know, the plans, the policies, processes that, uh, that you need to operate the business. So that's a really sort of quick look at the, what we look for. Um, and, and so you can, and we, and that list is available at the link. So the link is in the comments on YouTube, the links, the comments there on LinkedIn for you. Um, and you can ask me questions about that at any time. And you can, you can ask me more questions. What I really wanted to talk about in this video is there's a whole nother part to preparing that, that includes your team. And it's about getting team buy-in and it's about having effectiveness across the organization. And this was a core part of um, you know, it was a core part of some discussions I had two weeks ago in terms of planning for this particular session. The questions I was getting was, you know, we're preparing for our recertification or we're preparing for a transition. What do we need to get organized? I was like, look, you know, back to that objective, the purpose of our assessment when we come in is to see that you have a management system in place that is helping you to achieve, you know, the organizational's the organization's goals. What are the organization's goals? You know, they don't necessarily need to be documented, but you know, what is the CEO's goals? What are the chief operating officer's goals? What are the senior management goals? What are the team members' goals in the organization? How is your management system helping to achieve those things? How does it keep them top of mind every day? How does it have them displayed? How, does it, how do we monitor and measure our processes so that we can actually see um, you know, the business progressing forward? You know, what you see over my shoulder here is, yes, it's all the best practice logos, but we've done it to set it up so it looks like a dashboard. These are all graphs, if you like, graphs of performance. And, you know, it's, it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but the idea there is that you can see different parts of your organization and you can see on a dashboard how you're performing. And then you can ask the question, what's our goal? 
you know, where do we want to be? What's the goal with customers? What's the goal with safety? So the systems and processes in the background, which include training and include people, are there to help you go forward. So when we're coming in to do an assessment, what are we looking for? We're looking for those things. We're looking to say, well, what are your goals? And then we're going to then we're going to do an assessment to see if the systems and processes and training and meetings and communications and emails and reports and graphs uh, are they helping you to are they focused on and helping you to achieve those goals? So when you go to the ISO standards, they talk about objectives and targets. The objectives and targets in the ISO standards are your business plan. And the, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is people are trying to come up with quality objectives and targets. They're missing the point that actually it's the same as the business plan. And so then the standards calling for top management involvement and top management are super busy and they're like, can you just deal with the quality assurance certification ISO 9001? I don't want to know about it. I don't, don't even talk to me about it. I don't like it. It's really frustrating. I'm going to go over here and run the business. You just keep the auditors happy. So that's not how we want to work here at Best Practice, where we are here to help you grow your organization, improve your organization, improve your customer's experience. So we want to lean into that relationship and lean into those conversations um, with your team so that we can use the investment in the management system, the investment in the external audits to help you guys uh, grow and improve over time. So hopefully this is helpful. So the next thing I want to talk about is, well, I had these questions, which was, well, our team's really worried. You know, the auditor wants to talk to some of our team or the best practice assessor wants to talk to some of our team to do the ISO 9001 certification or recertification. And, and one of the questions was to do the ISO 45001 transition. So they're transitioning from one safety accreditation to uh, for ISO 45001, the new OHS uh, certification. What do we need to prepare? You know, what do we need to get organized? And they said, you know, our team's really worried, like we're trying to schedule them in, but the, they're pushing back because they don't know what the person's gonna look at, they don't know what they're gonna talk about, and they've got some anxiety. And so I want you to understand that, and some of you may already know this, I wanted to get on and talk about it, is that there will be team members in your organization who are feeling anxious and stressed about having to talk to an auditor. Like, just human nature is that some people don't like talking to new people and that's just you know that's just normal human nature and and, and so you know i'm a very outgoing um, person and i'll talk to anybody but i've got friends who who only like talking to the people that they know and it takes them you know i can introduce them to someone new but i've got to stay in the conversation for a little while to get them to warm up to each other then they'll eventually become friends and start talking and that is the same that that same human behavior exists in your organization so you're bringing in a new assessor a new auditor no one knows them you don't know what to expect so part of this process is to be thinking about some empathy towards your team members and and are they excited or worried about this assessment that's going to take place we want to try to get them to be excited we want them to be looking forward to meeting the assessor because we want the assessor and i want you to if you're not using best practice assessors if you're using someone else from another certification company anywhere in the world or another registrar first and foremost please consider best practice because we can work remotely anywhere in the world and help you but the other thing that i want to be talking about is the fact that we want that assessor to be, 20, in between now and 2025, we want those assessors to be more like a business coach than a policeman. We, so you wanna have a really positive relationship, partnership with your best practice assessor that's coming in to assess you at more like a business coach or more like a personal trainer to give you guidance and advice on things like high output management. So we've just issued this book to everybody in the organization and we're getting everybody to read it and then everybody is teaching each other parts of the book because we want our everybody at Best Practice, not just our assessors, but our business coaches, our recruiters, everybody's here in, in all of the different parts of our business to be able to help you with principles and practice to actually get the better results. So, you know, judge a book by its cover. What's this about? It's about high output management. So it's about getting the best out of people, helping people really enjoy their work and then getting great results. And, and the management system is part of that. Systems and processes are part of that. So when you start to think about your team members, we need to think about a pitch to our team members because if they are feeling anxious and they are feeling anxiety and they're like, I'm too busy, I can't deal with this right now, we haven't sold it to them properly. So my job here today with you, 
with um with some of these comments is to actually basically say well how, what's the script we can use with our team members so if you've got supervisors or managers or people involved that are pushing back uh, and don't want to be involved because they don't see the value then we basically want to you know be coming up with a pitch to them and saying okay well here's an opportunity we're going to bring somebody in they're going to be talking to you about how you know the, some ideas for improving our customer experience some ideas for improving safety some ideas for improving sustainability ideas for improving cyber security depending on what type of audit it is and so in terms of the recertification itself, they're going to go through all the clauses of the standard, but really what they, you want them to be doing is having a conversation where you're working together to look for opportunities for improvement. So the very first thing to be talking to your staff members, leaders, management, anybody in your organization that's going to get involved in a recertification assessment or an assessment or a surveillance or a new audit is they're coming in to help us identify opportunities for improvement so we can improve our customers' experience. The quality system is there to help us main, you know, maintain and improve our customer experience. And, and so customers that have great experiences do things like word of mouth referral and they tell people about their great experience and that helps you grow your organization and get more work um, and, so, and, and, and build a positive brand. So this assessor is coming in to do a quality assurance assessment to help us build our brand, to help us improve. Could you guys just scroll on the LinkedIn comments for me? Um, and also, there we go. Um, thank you, Stan. I appreciate that comment. Nothing but praise for our best practice assessors. And I hope over the next four years, we can continue in, to improve. So Stan is there on, on LinkedIn. Um, thank you very much for that, very, for your very kind words. So, um, you know, we, on Monday this week, uh, we spent a whole day with the whole business um, working on more professional development with our people so that we can continue to improve our customers' experience. So a core part of our management system is our monthly team meeting that we do, it's called an all hands meeting. We do an update, we do some professional development, we get people thinking, we do some practical exercises. Um, and then we do sales training with our sales team twice a week. Uh, we do training with our marketing team, you know, once a week when we get the opportunity, they have a call every couple of mornings and then our assessors have a call every Thursday night. Those are all parts of the ongoing professional development of our best practice team so they can have, so we can create a better customer experience. So back to your team members. If you've got managers and supervisors that are pushing back, then we really wanna be asking the question, you know, how can we pitch them or sell them on the idea that this is about you know, looking for opportunities for improvement? And then at the same time, talking to the assessor and saying, our team members are really worried about you coming and being open and honest about this. We're not super keen on this process. We haven't had great experiences in the past or we're not sure what's gonna happen. You know, talk to us about that. And, and that is part of this video for you guys is to say, hey, this is an opportunity, looking for opportunities for improvement. This is our customers are asking us to get ISO 9001 certified. And so why, you know, why are our customers asking for that? Because our customer wants us to be continuing, continuing to improve their experience. And so by default, they're saying, could you please get ISO 9001 certification, for example? So in the process of doing that, the customer is saying, hey, we want you guys to keep improving. We want this to be part of our relationship. We're gonna keep encouraging you to improve. And so you know, going and talking to your sales and business development team members, you can be saying, hey, it's really important you guys get involved in this because the assessor is gonna be coming and trying to give us guidance and advice on how we can more, more effectively use our quality management system to keep improving our organization. Okay, so now's, the time, now's a good time to be asking some questions. I've got more content, but use the comments there on LinkedIn or the comments there on YouTube if you have got any questions. So let me know, have, when was your last audit or have you got an audit coming up in the future? And then we can talk about that. Okay, I want you to be really thinking about asking questions. So when you are having an assessment, part of prepara preparation for an assessment is to be thinking about what value you can extract from the person coming in to do the assessments. An, an auditor or an assessor, like here at Best Practice, we call them a best practice assessor. They'll be doing ISO 9001 or they'll be doing ISO 14001 or they'll be for sustainability or ISO 45001 for safety or ISO 27001 for cybersecurity. Those are kind of the standards we focus on. We do others, but they're our four biggest um, services, if you like, in the certification business. What I ask clients to do is prepare a set of questions 
because the assessors that work for us are seeing different industries and different organizations every single day. So if you're turning up every day to your organization, that's excellent. We're turning up every day to a different organization. So we get to see what's good. We get to see what's not so good. We get to learn how to learn a business really fast. I get, I get a common question. You know, we don't want to change assessors because we've got to teach the assessor our whole business again. It's kind of out of context because we're learning brand new businesses every single day. And, and it is part of being an industry professional to learn how to learn a business really fast. So I don't want you to be worried if a new person is coming, uh, either from the best practice team or a different team, because if they are a, if they are a good industry professional, could you just scroll on the LinkedIn comments for me? Um, if they are a good industry professional, then they are going to be learning how to learn a business fast. They are going to be doing some research before they come, you know, with regards to industry issues. They're going to be looking at, you know, industry related issues and legislative related issues and system related issues for your industry and basically trying to think about how they can continue to improve. So I want you to be thinking about that and thinking about, okay, you know, what can, what questions can I ask? What might they have seen in other industries that we could consider and we could improve on? Is that camera being reset? It's good to go. It's going to keep running. All right. Excellent. Um, I'm ready for it to like turn off and, and have a technical issue. Um, okay. So Stan had his audit uh, six weeks ago, six standards over three days, mate. That's a, that's a, that's a mission. Um, you, you are doing very well, Stan. And um, you're a, you're a huge credit to, uh, to uh, the success of your, not only your drive and determination, but uh, everyone here at Best Practice. So, um, so yeah, that's excellent. So Stan Wall, um, I would encourage you to click on his profile and check out his organization. He's, he's there watching on LinkedIn. Uh, so jumping across and finding this live stream. If you are watching on YouTube, we're streaming live on my personal account. Uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, uh, please go ahead and do that. Send me a connection invitation. If you need an email address to connect with me on LinkedIn, it's just my first name at my last name. So Kobe at simat.com.au. So if, if LinkedIn is saying, hey, put in an email address to send me an invitation, uh, you can use that email address. It's like a private spam account that I have um, for, for those social media platforms. So uh, you can use that, uh, that email account if you need that. Otherwise, just find my profile and hit the follow button. Uh, okay, so um, uh, Lativia. Fantastic. Wow. So we've got people from all over the world, which is excellent. So uh, just for you guys watching live on YouTube, uh, have you recently had an assessment or best practice assessment or an, an external audit or an ISO audit? Uh, are you preparing for a recertification? Um, and I want to be you know, talking a little bit more about that. I'm here to help um, if you've got specific challenges, if you've got you know specific concerns, I really want to be helping you to sort of break that down. So back to the objective what are the things that you use to help control and run your organization that's what you really want to be you know when a person's coming in to do a recertification assessment then you really it's a time in motion study uh, for a recertification specifically which is what we said we would talk about in this video you have already had a system in place you've already been getting audited and so you know, in the, in, the, in the International Accreditation Forum three-year cycle. So we follow an IAF system, the International Accreditation Forum. We follow that system for doing certification. Every three years, we look at the whole standard. But we also look back over the last three years at the trends. We want to be uh, helping you to avoid having repeat issues. So, um, so excellent. Selena, you're preparing for a certification. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy. I'll, I'll cover certification specifically shortly in terms of getting ready. So um, can you scroll on the LinkedIn comments for me as well? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Stan, for your compliment there on LinkedIn. So, um, so in terms of actually um, um, preparing, let me answer Selena's question. So preparing for cert or comment, preparing for certification um, and feel that this gives a good overall perspective. So what is happening is you're getting certified and so the assessor at the end of their process so if we work backwards the assessor needs to make a recommendation to certify you so they're certifying that they have seen a system is implemented they've seen it's you know it's defined implemented and maintained if it's selena if you want to write that down that our management system has been defined it follows the intent the core word is intent of the standard 
and that it is it is defined, it's implemented, and it's maintained. Now, if, for example, you might have you know some forms and systems and registers and process templates, you know the the analogy I like to use is: is there ink on those things? Have they been used? Are they filled out? They don't need to be perfect, and they don't need to be complete by any means, um, because one thing about the process, particularly for Selena, for you preparing for certification, is um, you know carefully and diplomatically using the term immature versus mature. When you first get certified, when you're starting this journey, you have an immature system and then over time it will mature. And so I want you to be thinking about the concept of we have an immature system and it's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Please don't put so much effort in you know, thinking in your mind what perfect looks like and trying to assume what someone else is gonna be looking for. So as you go through that process, you, you can mature your system over time. So you can start and then you can make your system over time, you know, it might grow and you might add things to it and you might then also cut things out of it and make it more efficient. So we wanna start, we wanna follow the intent. So it's really when you're reading the ISO standards and you're preparing yourself, you really wanna be thinking about actually what's the intent of what we're talking about here. I think the other thing that's worth noting, and, I, and I, I've got a couple more points that I want to talk about, which I'll you know keep trying to remember what they were. But one of them was, I see a lot of people get fear and anxiety, at, you know, in, in terms of preparing for any type of audit, uh, whether it's recertification or certification, because I see an assumption that the professional coming to see you is five star. So don't put the audit, you know, rule number one with you and your team is don't put the auditor up on a pedestal. You know, they're not a professional that's running a management system. They're not a professional that's in an organization and managing an organization every day. They are a professional assessor. And they are, they, you know, they, they are like a lone wolf, if you like, out seeing different organizations every day. They might work in a bit of a team and they might be well networked and very friendly. But, but it's important not to put that, self, put that person up on a pedestal. They are a human um, they, you know, they you know, some days they're going to be happy. Some days they're going to be cranky. They've got kids at home. They've got family. They're traveling. They're fatigued. You know, you know, they've got ego. They've got all those things going on. And so, you know, you, you want to be really thinking about, um, you know, that person and you want to be saying, okay, what does that person know that I can extract? You know, what, what have they seen that's good? What have they seen that's bad? You know, and then make your own judgment. Don't just assume what they're saying is good is good. Um, so, it, you know, be a little bit skeptical. And if, you know, if they're asking you questions and you might find with your team members, and this is for you and your team members, if they're asking a question or they're, or they're you know, laboring on a particular point, trying to get their point across and they just won't let it go, and, you know, there is some debate, you know, and they're saying you need to do something specific if they're raising a non-conformance or if they're raising a finding and you disagree with it, you know, it's important to make sure you clearly understand what they're asking for. So here is the kryptonite for the, you know, the Superman assessor. Show me where it says I have to do that. So, you know, they're going to say, show me your management system. And if they're laboring on a point saying, you know, trying to drill home a point, you need to improve this or you need to change that. And you're not understanding or, and you're disagreeing. The kryptonite to the, to the assessor is show me where it says I have to do that. And if they can pull it out, you know, up on their screen electronically in ISO standard, and you can talk through a clause of the standard and they can show you, then that's gonna help you learn. So I want you to be mindful that you can always ask that question. If you're not sure what they're talking about, show me what you're assessing, show me the criteria, show me the standard, and then I'll see if I can understand it and answer your question more effectively. So that's like the kryptonite. So you can, you know, if, if, you know, if you are getting pushback, you know, it is, don't make the assumption that the person is a 10 out of 10 professional. Like they are professional, but don't put them on a pedestal. Um, you know, try and extract the value from them that, you know, what do they know about different industries and different organizations and what have they seen work and not work? Ask them questions about, you know, how could we make our management system more effective? How could we get more buy-in from our team members? Um, how could we have our management system have more impact? How could our leaders be more influential? Um, you know, how could we have improvements to our system so it controls our performance? You know, areas of your business could be a little bit out of control 
um, and you know the the graphs you know you're producing graphs of performance and they're up and down how could we more effectively control our performance those are the kinds of questions you know you can ask consulting questions a lot of assessors will say oh i can't do any consulting that's rubbish they can give you guidance and advice and in fact i'll read you the exact rules so if you're in a situation where an assessor is pushing back on you then i will read you um, i'll read you this quickly uh, this rule right now uh, it says uh, with specifically a lot of assessors might come in and say i can't do any consulting it would be a conflict of interest that's rubbish what uh, the definition of management system consultancy is is participation in establishing implementing or maintaining a management system that's your job they're coming in to do an audit so this is specifically the auditor example one preparing or producing manuals or procedures so if your auditor prepares or produces manuals or procedures specifically your ones and then comes back to audit it that's a conflict of interest so we have an ISO standard, ISO 17021, that we follow to do ISO 9001 audits. It's like our height how-to guide, if you like. Example two, giving very specific advice, instructions, or solutions towards the development and implementation of a management system. So management system consultancy, participation in establishing, implementing, or maintaining a management system, and then preparing or producing manuals or procedures or giving very specific advice, instructions or solutions towards the development and implementation of a management system. Note, arranging training or participating as a trainer is not considered consultancy. So your assessor or your auditor or us here at Best Practice like exactly what I'm doing right now, arranging training or participating as a trainer is not considered consultancy provided that where the course relates to management systems or auditing it's confined to the provision of generic information the trainer should not provide client specific solutions the provision of generic information but not client specific solutions for the improvement of processes or systems is not considered to be consultancy such information may include explaining the meaning and intention of certification criteria like the standards identifying improvement opportunities explaining associated theories methodologies techniques or tools sharing non confidential information on related best practices other management aspects that are not covered by the management system being audited so in summary what your assessor or your auditor can do is they can explain the meaning and intention of certification criteria they can identify improvement opportunities they can explain theories associated theories they can explain methodologies they can explain techniques and they can explain tools tools that you can use to form part of your management system. They can share non-confidential information on, best, on related best practices. They can talk about other management aspects that are not covered by the management system being audited. They can give advice on other management aspects. They can give advice on training staff. They can give advice on leadership. They can give advice on internal influence. Those are the things they can do, and that is the value adding that I want you to expect from your assessments. When you're preparing for an assessment, I want you to say, hey, this person's coming in to do an assessment and an audit, they're gonna get their job done, but I want explanations on the meaning of the standards. I want improvement opportunities. I want explanation on associated theories, methodologies, techniques. I want you to teach me some of the tools. I want you to share non-confidential information on related best practices, and I want other management aspects. You know, If we're having other issues and you've got industry experience, I want you to tell me about those. That's what I want you to be expecting. And I want you to communicate that to your team members. So if you're looking for this information, this is section 3.3 of ISO 17021. Um, for fear of copyright breaches, I won't sort of post this stuff because it's straight out of the standard, but you can get a copy of that uh, out of it. And I've just got a screenshot of it on my phone. So I hope this has been helpful. So Selena, absolutely have worked in a very mature environment and now I'm an infant system. <laughs> That's correct. Um, that's a drastic difference, I agree. Thank you for the link on the paper being, um, yeah, excellent. So um, so yeah, you've got the link there in the comments above on YouTube if you're watching live on YouTube and you've also got a link there on LinkedIn. Are there any further comments on LinkedIn? We haven't got many on LinkedIn today. No, we're all good. Okay, has anyone else got any other questions? If you've just come on and you are watching, um, we've got a few people 
people watching online on YouTube, thanks for joining us today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel here with Best Practice, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. To subscribe, you do need a Gmail account. You need to be logged in with Gmail. So I'd recommend Chrome browser um, or being logged into Gmail. And then you can click subscribe. You'll get all the notifications to all the videos we upload here on YouTube. For those of you interested in ISO 9001, we released, I think, about 12... 10, 12, 11 videos over the last two weeks on very specific questions about ISO 9001. We're carrying on the theme here at Ask Best Practice to get you guys asking more questions. I'm going to be talking about change management tomorrow. So in 20, 23 hours and 15 minutes, we're going to be starting the next live stream and I'm going to be talking about how you can roll out more effective change management with the 10 most common change management questions that get asked so that when you're implementing your systems and you are facilitating change management in your organization, I want to teach you guys how to be more influential. So my goal is to help you guys be better systems managers, better leaders, better managers, better influencers in your organization. I'm going to bring in some sales techniques. They're going to help you to be more influential with your change management programs. I'm going to be talking about that in 23 hours and 17 minutes to be exact uh, when we go live. Again, it'll be a recording. It'll be available on the YouTube channel. So if you can't make that live stream because it's the middle of the night or you're in another part of the world, you'll be able to come back to the YouTube channel and see that recording after the event. Um, you'll see we're live when we're live and you'll be able to come back and see that. I'll also broadcast live on my LinkedIn profile. So I want to encourage everybody that's watching on uh, on YouTube right now. If you haven't connected me, with me or followed me on LinkedIn, please do that. That's the platform that I'm focusing on. I'm posting videos to the YouTube channel that are hopefully helpful. If any part of this video has been helpful for you today, you can share the link. You can copy down the bottom. There's a big share button on the bottom of YouTube there below on the bottom of the screen. You can click that share button, copy the link and email that out to people in your organization. My intention is to use these videos to help you with your training. I want to do some of the heavy lifting inside your organization. So if there are issues or training that you'd like or videos you'd like me to produce, please make some comments. And if there are videos that, that can be shared around your organization that helps you with your agenda and helps you with your change management, helps you with your project, please let me know. I'm also here to ask questions. That's why I'm live streaming. So I'm going to keep coming up with topics for you guys um, and I'll keep talking about them. But for you guys, I want you to be asking me the questions. Now's the opportunity. We've got about 15 more minutes uh, for me to answer questions and then I'm going to move into another meeting. Uh, but um, for you guys, I'm here right now. I'm live and we've got, uh, we've got some questions to answer. So, um, so you guys go ahead, dominate those comments. So if you have got questions, if there's anything you want to know, are you preparing for a certification? Are you worried about anything? How do you make it simple? How do you make it effective? Uh, tell me the most useful piece of information. If you, if you wouldn't mind commenting and letting me know the most useful piece of information that you've heard in this live stream today, what's your key takeaway? I want to anchor this information. The more that you can talk about what you've learned today, the more you will cement the learning and you'll be able to draw on it in the future. If I just lecture to you and talk to you like this, uh, as I have been, you're not going to retain a huge amount of the information. I'm super keen for you to be for you to retain this information. And the best way for you to do that is to play it back. So what was your key takeaway? For you guys watching and commenting on YouTube, uh, let me know in your comments. What was one of the things that you can sort of think about from this presentation and that you can take away? I'll wait for your comments. Selena, that's an excellent one. Yes, that's exactly right. The auditors are human. You're exactly right. Don't put them up on a pe don't put them up on a pedestal. Um, Eric, um, okay, you're welcome. Generic comment there. Thanks very much, uh, Eric. Um, Selena, it's very important to understand they are human. You know, I was an auditor. Um, you know, with a young baby and a wife at home and traveling all around the country, I'm doing a lot less of that. So obviously I'm not doing any travel now because of the pandemic. But um, yeah, it was, you know, it's basically I got issues going on and, you know, the cars breaking down and, you know, tradesmen at the house, contractors at the house doing things, maintenance, that kind of stuff. Um, yes, getting a revamp, revamped modern sleek business plan. Uh, Selena, if you haven't heard me talk about uh, one of the great books that we've been using, there's a book called Scaling Up by Vern Harnish. It's got a template right in the middle of the book for a one-page business plan. In fact, you could probably Google Vern Harnish one-page business plan. Um, scaling Up, is it on the shelf? Uh, yes, it is. Excuse me for one moment. Can you see it? Purple right there. 
here it is. So uh, this book here, I've been recommending it. Uh, this, uh, you know, if you want a $30 tips and tricks on a good uh, strategic quality management system for your organization, uh, this has got a really, you know, you could literally implement this and get certified to ISO 9001 and get the pleasant byproduct of having massive growth in your organization. Um, you know, so that's why we're recommending it. our business coaches are coaching this program. Uh, we're in the process of getting uh, accredited with these guys uh, to deliver this program. You can buy this on Amazon. Uh, you can buy this, you know, it's $30. Uh, you know, on average around the world, some places it's a little bit cheaper, some places a little bit more expensive, hard copy, soft copy. Uh, and right in the middle is the one page business plan. So, um, so we've got, you know, a template for a SWOT analysis. Um, this is the, the one page strategic plan. On this side, um, uh, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats and trends. So the templates are right here in the middle of the book. So for you guys in, you know, and, and any, any size organization, this is not a small to medium or small business program. This is for any size. Um, the one page strategic plan, there it is. All the elements to it right there. And then guidance on the activities, uh, some process information to really help the organization. So my apologies for the lighting and it's not coming through great, but this is uh, right here in the middle of this particular book. Um, does it look okay for you guys? Or is it white? Okay. So that, that's the cover of the book. Luke's going to zoom in. Hang on, let me open it up again. I've lost my page. There we go. Luke's going to see if he can zoom in for you to show you that. Not working? Okay, we're trying. Okay, faith. I like the kryptonite, which allows to get um, direction and clarity. Absolutely. So uh, let me know in the comments if you are on YouTube or if you are on LinkedIn. Let me know what's your key takeaway. The kryptonite is, you know, I've been in audits myself, you know, either as a client or as an auditor, and I've seen people laboring on a point. They just can't drop it. The auditor's ego gets in the way, and they're like, you need to fix this, and, you know, you're not responding. The auditor's not, being, not feeling heard, and... Um, and so part of that process is, you know, and, you know, different cultures treat things differently. And, and auditors come from a range and assessors come from a range of cultures. I've seen them laboring on a point. And so that's why I came up with this concept. I was like, well, show the client, show the people where it says that they have to do that. And they couldn't do that. And it made them drop the point. And so, you know, you really want to be focusing on improvement and really understanding. And so the kryptonite is show me where it says I have to do that. Um, and that's also, you know, I, I had a reputation in high school of being a bit of an anarchist. Um, you know, really challenging authority. And I still do that because I really want to be really clear so I can understand the rules and then I can work out how to use them to my advantage. So, uh, excellent. Okay, um, any more questions? Doesn't look like it. So um, there's a little bit of a delay between uh, YouTube and our live stream right now. Um, so I will keep monitoring the comments and I'll answer your questions. I am live, we're live two days a week. I'm here to answer your questions on any particular topic. If you're not on our email list, go to bestpractice.biz and subscribe to our email list so you get the notifications when we are gonna go live. And that's also a good opportunity for you guys to reply to those emails if you have got questions. So the team, there's, there's three people in the team monitoring all the emails coming in. Uh, every day. So if you have got a question and you don't want to sort of comment on the internet, uh, then you can go ahead and um, hey, hey from the Philippines. So Sheila, uh, good to have you guys uh, f uh, here on the Philippines. So great global audience today, uh, which has been absolutely excellent. So thanks everybody for joining us. So yeah, if you have got questions, uh, hit bestpractice.biz, have a good cruise around and a look around that site, that website that's getting updated three, four, five times per day. There's, uh, there's up to three articles per day being posted to the best practice news feed. So we are building out our business news feed. So if you want to see what's going on uh, with best practice, just check in, you know, check, put a shortcut in your browser for bestpractice.biz and keep coming back to the bestpractice.biz news feed on a daily basis. There's more videos every week on YouTube. There's more articles every single day on the Best Practice Biz webpage. Uh, if you haven't got them already, there's a few guides there for free on bestpractice.biz forward slash guides and obviously all the online training courses. So if you want an online training course on how to transition to some of the standards or you want a basic online course for ISO 9001, there's a great online course. I believe our Black Friday sale may still be running. You can use the, uh, sorry, Vanessa, what was the discount code? 
you there. We'll find out the discount code for you before we hang up. What is it? What's the Black Friday discount code or is it finished? She's not there. Okay, no, go, no worries. We'll post it in the comments. Um, so the there is... Um, uh, if you monitor, actually go and check your email. So if you received an email about this live stream, the Black Friday discount code is there. I think take 60, T-A-K-E 60, 60, T-A-K-E 60. Luke's going to type that in the comments. There it is, 60% off. So this, best um, Vanessa's posted it or someone's posted it. Uh, the, if you go to the Best Practice Online Training Academy, we're going to leave it open for 24 more hours, the Black Friday sale. Any of the courses, uh, unfortunately not the standards. We've got hard copies of the standard. You're already getting those at cost. Uh, so uh, if you want to purchase any of the online courses there from Best Practice, uh, the link has just been posted on YouTube. Uh, you can get that Black Friday discount there, 60% off any of the courses in the Online Training Academy. If you want to get a proposal for ISO certification or ISO registration from best practice, our certification here at best practice is, um, is, is recognized worldwide. Uh, we're accredited with the International Accreditation Forum. Uh, and so we, you can use best practice certificates anywhere in the world for ISO 9001, for ISO 14001, for ISO 45001, uh, for ISO 27001. Joseph is standing by right now. If you would like to reach out to us here at Best Practice, you can go to the live chat on our website. We can get you in contact with Joseph. So there you go. When you see the um, when you see the live chat pop up, I think Luke is um, looks like he's sharing, he's copying links. There we go. There's the link on on LinkedIn. Um, that if you want a quote for registration or certification with Best Practice, Joseph can help you with that proposal and you can use the amazing auditors and Best Practice assessors here at Best Practice. They do the whole process remotely. So the industry has been approved to do all of the assessments right now remotely while the pandemic is going on. Uh, so we can do that. And then later on down the track, we can work out how we can actually come and visit you. So if you would like a proposal on ISO certification, recertification, a transfer, if you're already ISO certified and you would like to transfer to best practice, that will give you an unlimited subscription to the training academy and access to our best practice assessors and the amazing best practice logos. You can reach out to us here at best practice. But in the meantime, I'm happy to keep giving you guys great information here on our YouTube channel and live on LinkedIn and all of our great uh, social pages. So. Uh, the other thing, we've been doing lots of great stuff on Instagram. If you're an Instagram user or a Facebook user, uh, I'd actually like to know your preference. Do you prefer LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram? Do you use them all? Do you use them not very often? I'd love to know what platform or Twitter even. Uh, we've got a, a lovely Twitter account and we're doing lots of stuff on Twitter. Let me know in the comments what your favorite social media platform is for this kind of content because we obviously use YouTube a lot but if there are other platforms that you do use we are posting to all of them every single day uh, so let me know you can find me Kobe Simmet from Best Practice on all of your favorite social platforms and you will get posts from me every day uh, for some of you that would be a lot so Stan knows how much we post here uh, from Best Practice uh, but lots going on all of the time okay let's uh, wrap this up let me know in the comments what was your favorite thing about this presentation? Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite social media platform? I would love to know that so I can improve your customer experience, improve your best practice experience. Um, Selena, what's the best education certification that a person can obtain within their company to implement and manage ISO? Um, I think the best education is obviously time and experience. And that's one of the reasons why we started the YouTube channel. Uh, I, I didn't find a specific course. Um, okay, uh, Kokens, I'll talk about total quality management. Um, so um, what's the best education certification that a person can obtain? Uh, I think that um, I would be actually encouraging you to consider something like a MBA, like a Masters of Business Administration, um, or something with regards to change management. Um, because that's actually going to help you in all aspects of the business rather than something that's specifically ISO. Like, you know, yes, we've got some great little short courses on ISO, which I think are informative in our training academy, but the best education or certification the person can obtain within their company uh, to, to implement and manage ISO, I think would be looking at, you know, general management, executive management kinds, kinds of things. So I think 
if you were to read Selena, you know, like I know this is going to sound crazy, but I just want to give you my honest opinion and an honest answer. If you were to read these two books and then talk to people about them. So we talk about, you know, I'm really interested to what's the most effective, keyword effective, what's the most effective adult education technique? It's the, the adult that is doing the teaching is the one that learns the most. So if you were to read this book and then teach other people in your business about this book, you're going to learn a lot. So what is the best education for a person to help you with ISO? The best education would be reading this book, teaching people in your organization, and then you're going to learn the most and be able to implement it. However, you're not going to get a certificate. So if you're looking for a certificate or if you think a certificate is valuable so you can put it on your LinkedIn profile or on your CV, then a best practice course from our training academy, you can get a certificate. Um, I'm not confident in recommending someone. Um, 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 Selena, your comment there. So I have an MBA, but it's very dated. ISO wasn't a thing 20 years ago. No, that's correct. It, it wasn't a thing 20 years ago, but the MBA for you is really about, um, you know, it's a, a modern MBA. If, and I'm not saying do another one. Don't, don't go and do another one because you've already got one. But it teaches you about business administration and it teaches you about networking. And it teaches you about higher sort of level general management. And that's a piece of authority. So I think, um, okay, excellent. If the certificate's not a value at the moment, I think you've done the right thing. You've, you've read both the books, which I think is excellent. Um, good on you, Eric. Um, for placing those orders. So, you know, I, you know, you guys know, for you guys that follow me really closely, I have over 500 books now in my business books library. Um, I'm ordering two, three, four books every single day. Uh, if there are business books that people recommend on any business issue, I will, you know, if people, my, my criteria for ordering a business book is it needs to be, rec someone needs to have read it. So if someone recommends it to me, have you read it? Yes or no? Because sometimes people will recommend a book, but they haven't read it. Have you read it? Did you like it? I'll take your recommendation and I buy the book straight away, either on Amazon or on eBay. I order it straight away and then it turns up here. So couriers come to this office every single day delivering books. So, um, so I think that is the best kind of learning. So I have a library now or a catalog if you like. And so yesterday I had an had a issue with one of my team members. I went straight to a book, straight to a chapter. We both read that chapter overnight. We're gonna talk about it and that's gonna help us correct that issue and improve that area of performance in the organization. So I think specifically on ISO, we have put uh, obviously lots of free videos here on the YouTube channel and you can search inside our YouTube channel you can search different topics. So you could search ISO 9001 and browse through the best practice videos on ISO 9001. You could go across to the training academy and purchase one of the ISO 9001 courses, use the Black Friday discount code, I would recommend that. But to actually lock in the adult education, it's very important that you start teaching other people. So in your organization or getting involved in a group, uh, we have the best practice mastermind Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group that you can join. It's not a very active group at the moment. I need to get in and do more with it. But the more that you do teaching and working with each other and talking about those kinds of things, the more you're going to learn. So that's my honest advice right now on the best thing. That's what we're implementing here at Best Practice. We don't look necessarily externally at external training um, because again, the trainers are only human. The course is kind of, you know, is it a good course? How much improvement does it constantly have? Because a training course itself is a product and is the product a good product or a bad product? I know that here at Best Practice internally, we do a lot with the books because books take a lot of work. It takes, often it takes more work to write and publish a book than it does to create a training course. And so, in fact, I know that because I know how much work it is. We're producing a book at the moment, uh, a book about this size, and it's taken us so far, it's taken us two years to put it together. Whereas we can create training courses really easily and really quickly, like today has been a training course kind of. So, um, um, uh, and thank you very much, Selena. I appreciate that. Yes, my guidance, I'm trying to I'm trying to help you guys. Like my goal is to help you guys improve your customer experience. My, my goal is for your place, your workplace to be a fun place to work. And um, that's why we get on and do so much of this training. So yes, Selena, I really appreciate that, uh, that compliment. Thank you very much. So um, yeah, that's, that's the goal is to be, to be going to a place where you resonate with the trainer. You're able to implement what they're talking about easily, get feedback and practice in a safe environment uh, so that you can think about what your goals are in the future. So 
tomorrow, I'm going to be talking more about change management. What I really want to talk about tomorrow is how to be more influential, but I'm going to be talking about it in the context of change management and helping your team members adopt the ideas and principles that you're changing and implementing to help the organization have a better management system, whether it's a quality, safety environment, cybersecurity, risk management system, financial system. So tomorrow I'm going to be talking about change management to help you to be more influential and more effective at making improvements in your organization. So that's the goal for tomorrow. If there's a specific topic you guys want me to talk about next week when we go live, let me know in the comments uh, or in reply to uh, email. Uh, Luke Antrim, thank you very much for your comment on LinkedIn. I know your favorite platform is Instagram. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so Luke's, uh, Luke's commented there. So we know Luke love Instagram, loves Instagram. He's got um, over uh, 16 or 17 or 18,000 followers, I think himself on his own Instagram account. So let me know your first social, f your, let me know in the comments your favorite social media platform so we can know where you guys like receiving the comment. We will keep doing more YouTube videos. We will keep doing more LinkedIn posts. We will keep doing more on Twitter. And if you don't see us on Instagram and if you don't see us on LinkedIn and if you don't see us on YouTube and if you don't see us on Twitter, you will definitely see us right here next time on Ask Best Practice. You know how this goes. I'm going to see you guys in 23 hours, in less than 23 hours. It's going to be 22 hours and 57 minutes. We'll be right back here live on Best Practice TV. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you really enjoyed these videos. Let me know in the comments. I'm going to keep watching the comments after the live stream finishes. Let me know your favorite part. Let me know what really helped because that's part of locking in the adult education. And I'll see you all right here next time on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.